No. Yeah, I'm totally glad you called. Now, I got a similar situation. Some vulnerable, half-philosophical bitch. Nah. Nah, she's mixed. She's like, she's like white and like some kind of Chinese. Like Japanese, I think. Nah, she's hot. She does that um, thing for her picture. Like the, the tit photo lobotomy. No, that thing where it's like, to make sure the tits are in the picture, she'll even cut off her head. So it like, looks like this retarded ass popularized form of a woman, you know, supposed to make sure, you know, they're a woman type thing. Cause you know, looking like a guy whatsoever is disgusting. So you always put your tits in the photo. That's yeah, hot. Clearly one of those, I don't know if she's vulnerable, but she seems vulnerable. So, you know, just tell them a little bit of what they want to hear, listen to them and encourage them that yes, they are as introspective as they think they are, even when they're often self-destructive with taking pictures like that and presenting themselves in such a way where they're necessarily going to attract people that they could never appreciate and who could never appreciate them. But tell them, no, 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 you're on the right path. Just do exactly how you're doing and, and then slip in the occasional compliment. Let them know, reassure them that you're one of those people who sees them as this beautiful thing they could never live up to. You know, all while, yeah, all while just flattering them and saying, no, no, you're you're very introspective and totally get the Cambodian pussy. It'll be awesome. So that's what I'm hoping to do. I, I, she, she contacted me first, actually. It's from a, um, I got a comment actually right here. It was on my video called uh, women as cultures, unaccountable gods. And I talk about like, eventually you're going to fall apart. Eventually people aren't going to care about you once you're not young enough and attractive enough for them to tolerate your nonsense. She put the comment, I find myself going between bouts of great hypocrisy, making an effort to look socially acceptable, in times where my actions go fully in line with my moral beliefs. Because of my age, I feel I'm still insulated and have not been made to bear the full repercussion of not being socially acceptable. People often feign concern and tell me I ought to go seek mental help. Interesting that she points out feign concern because she recognizes that. I should key into that. You're very perceptive that people don't actually care about you. More you just reactionary and, and realize the obviousness that they don't. People often feign concern, tell me I should get mental health. Soon nobody will feign concern over me. Perhaps I will be shut away. And uh, I'll, I'll shut myself away and after that because nobody wants to see a crazy old woman. And then I responded to her saying that that was you know, half introspective and, and that she fell off the end there. You know, just, just give them enough of a challenge where they feel, wow, this person... They're not objectifying me, they're challenging me. And if they're just objectifying me, I'll never live up to that because I can't possibly live up to the best case scenario that they've seen of a, of a painted face. So I, I feel at ease if someone challenges me because that means they're on the level. Yeah, I know, it's a great ploy. We can totally use that to lure insecure, vulnerable women who want to be told what they want to hear rather than what they need to hear. And of course, I'd know all about that. I have three daughters after all, and two sons, you know, brothers and sisters, and you know, it would be so nice if somebody would tell them what they need to hear, despite what they want to hear, even at the risk of not continuing a friendship with them because, you know, truth is a, is a bitter, jagged pill. And so it's very easy if you just level with somebody and tell them exactly how you see them, especially if you, if it's not exactly flattering, it's, it's very ideal that people would be so forthcoming, but nah, it doesn't really serve the purposes of, you know, getting laid or paid or appreciated by a person who is adrift in a social sea of apathy where you know they're pretty much helpless and and have to feign concern for each other well she had a pretty interesting video so i kind of wanted to mention that at some point she talked about mixed race people she's you know, like i said some kind of white and some kind of chinese uh, probably vietnamese and she talked about how that scene is some kind of necessarily respectable thing, like, oh, people have transcended racism. And she pointed out, and you know, she's, she's smart. She's probably been locked away because enough people have seen her as a fetish object, looking all white with big eyes. Um, they've seen her as a fetish object. She said people think she's weird looking. Eh, plenty of people are going to compliment her, and, and she's their fetish object. She totally looks like the kind of person you'd type up in a search engine and you know, try to find getting fucked in the ass or something. But she's pretty introspective. She must have locked her, herself away and, and thought for, for a time. She, she mentioned um, 
that you're not necessarily not racist just because you are mixed race. In some cases, she points out that you might actually be more racist and that you find a different race because you believe, you know, for example, if you know, some kind of Chinese, like a Cambodian, grabs a hold of a white person, it's because they think the white person will, for example, be a better provider or they think that they'll have more beautiful children with them. So you could be more racist, but as she pointed out, it's a whole lot of people trying to use her, for example, as, as a, um, uh, how did she phrase it? Um, she, she doesn't exist to assuage the guilt of white liberals, which is a little too narrow, but those kind of people who think we live in a post-racial uh, society, therefore any mixed race person, they're doing it necessarily for the right reasons. And uh, they're to be respected when really it could just be a couple of exceptionally racist people who like a certain race more. And so they, they go out and do that. Filipino is a great example. You know, oh, Filipino women, they just love white men. And, and of course, white men, American men specifically, or American men in general, they love to think that it's, oh, because you're a good person. Or it's like, oh, white people are just so attractive. No, you're a meal ticket. If it were black Americans that were necessarily well off, then you could go to Mexico or any kind of China, like Mongolia, and they would want the black men because they think, wow, this guy can provide, this guy is wealthy. So, you know, plenty of Americans, soldiers, for example, like to think that they have some kind of admirable character and that's why they're fetishized around the world. But really, it has to do with a racism of thinking white people look better or at least the belief that the white person or the, the American is going to be able to provide for them. But anyhow, I think I'm going to just go and uh, pretend to be interested in what this girl has to say. I'm not going to mention any of that about the, the, her cutting her head off for the picture so that her breasts are certain to be into it. I'm not going to tell her if I think she's attractive. I mean, she, she apparently thinks that she's weird looking or she's been told that. So I'm going to just let that fester a little bit and then kind of sneak in compliments here and there so I can keep her insecure as hell, but at the same time say things that are endearing to her because uh, that'll probably trap her into uh, just a sense of imbalance where where she impossibly believes that I'm the one person that will understand her and uh, then I'll have her emotional carcass wrapped around my finger which you know what could be better than having a whole bunch of miserable spiritually dead people vying for our attention of course, we as sexually retarded guys would know that. We're about to go out to the bars and have pseudo-philosophical conversations with emotionally and mentally retarded sluts. And hopefully that'll go well for us because it's about the only way we can manage to feel like we matter in this culture, that you know, the Western culture in general, and plenty of Eastern culture where a man is nothing if he doesn't provide, and he, of course, is sexually worthless. All right, yeah, good luck to you, too. And I'm going to go and have a conversation with this this uh, fetishized woman now and you know facilitate her half introspection. Cool. And now to turn off my iPod. Oh, how long were you there? Nah, baby. I was talking about someone else. So. How was your day?